But I hope he gets better anyway. He's a fantastic player. Yeah, there's a few young boys coming through, but you can't really replace a Dean Cox. Anyway, yeah. enough about the footy and the sport and things. Let's talk about something I haven't got very much of whatsoever. <laughs> money. Now, there's a bit of a demon trifecta out there at the moment if you're trying to have money in your pocket. When you combine rising fuel prices, inflation costs... Interest we've got rates. Interest rates. Everything, uh, the mortgages going up. It's hard for the average person to uh, actually put aside some money to get ahead. There's so much information out there that you can take on board. How do you wade your way through it and work out what's right for you, what's right for me? What's How right do for I make more money? How do I make some money? <laughs> How do I save my money? <laughs> <laughs> to help us get through the glut of information out there and work out what's right for us, we like to welcome back one of our most favourite people here at Wake Up, one of our presenters, and of course our money mentor from Findra, Mr Matt Hearn. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. Welcome yeah. back. Thank you. Did you enjoy your break? I enjoyed my break and I'm very much looking forward to the time ahead as our new baby arrives very soon. Oh, oh another soon. baby? Yeah, very soon, a few weeks. Now, as a financial planner, wouldn't it be more sensible to buy a television? Then what? <laughs> 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 Mate, right, I can't even remember. I'll explain to you in the ad break. Right. <laughs> oh, I got it. That's okay. It's too, it's too early for jokes like that, isn't it, Jase? <laughs> now, we know that I like to have money, but I don't really know much about how to get it. Am I alone in feeling so overwhelmed or bordering on disinterested when it comes to uh, wealth <laughs> creation and, and getting ahead on the money track? Well, was, the, all the information just sort of seems to be a little bit much. Well, thanks for your honesty and admitting that you know, it is overwhelming and, dis, and sometimes disinterested, but you're not alone. Last year, the Australian government's Financial Literacy Foundation released some research that showed over half of Australians are feeling so overwhelmed by money and find it so boring that they get you know, overwhelmed and distressed about it and perhaps then end up doing not, nothing about it. So you're absolutely not alone. But that feeling, just because you're not alone, because it's a common feeling, doesn't necessarily mean that it's, an, that it's a good way to, to stay. Mm. So what we'd like to do in these segments coming up over the next few weeks is help you work through that, because it doesn't really matter what you did last week, or even yesterday, or even this morning on the way in. It's what matters as we walk out the door and what we do from the day forward. Because I'm not very interested in dental work either, but I do know that if I don't pay attention to it, it's going <laughs> to cost me down the track. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of benefits to paying attention to it, absolutely. Mm. So yeah. today, we're going to start. Is there some easy basics that we can begin with, you know, getting us through those money issues or saving or, you know, getting ahead? Yeah, absolutely there are. And that's what you find. You mentioned the glut of information. There is so much information when you go out there. It's easy to be so overwhelmed by it. What is the right thing for you? The great thing is there are really simple things like, you, like you've asked. And what I've gone done over the years is identified about a dozen common behaviours that are very easy and simple to implement, and I call them the behaviours of money mastery. And those, say, 12 dozen behaviours, they fall broadly under three categories. They are cash flow control, having a contingency plan, and cracking the whip over your wealth. So this is the three Cs you've spoken about. Absolutely. So cash flow. Now, <laughs> yes. um, I've got a fairly one directional flow of cash, yeah. uh, sort of in the pocket, pay the bills if I can afford to pay the bills that, that week. Cash flow control, is it just about that horrible B word, budgeting? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's, it's simply because there's a bunch of behaviours under there. Budgeting would be simply one behaviour under cash flow control. And next week we're going to delve into a lot more detail about cash flow control. So I'll deal with some of those beliefs around budgeting next week, maybe, mate. But cash flow control is really having a look at all the money that comes in and all the money that goes out and having a handle on it. Because as you get wealthier, you're going to have income coming from more than one source. It's not, it won't just be your employment income. It'll be passive income from investments as well. Okay. You need. It will be. It absolutely will be. It's not hopefully. I can guarantee it will be, Anita. So you will have multiple sources of income and you will have multiple ways that you're distributing it. Some of it will be for your own personal development. Some of it for debt management. Some of it will be even for um, investing in other investments to generate more passive income. So cash flow control is the behaviours around making sure you know where all that is going in and out. I feel like I should be writing this down. So right. that's the first C. Now, yeah, I was just going to say cracking the whip. Yep. That's a bit of a scary term in a way. What does that mean, cracking the whip? It sounds vicious. It, it does sound vicious, but in a sense, if you think of it maybe as, uh, as a jockey cracks the whip over, over a horse yeah. to, to spur it on a little bit, you want to do exactly the same with your wealth. So any money that you've already saved, that you've worked really hard to save, you want to make sure it is working just as hard for you right now as you work to save it in the first place. And that's what cracking the whip is about. So some money that you've saved right now could, for example, be superannuation. If you've ever worked in a job and had some superannuation paid, you've got some wealth. So don't assume that you haven't got any wealth. It might be a little bit by what you perceive, 
but let's make sure that it's working really, really hard for you. And there's a little, few behaviours that you can do for that, plus a few other things that we can crack the whip over to make sure they're working hard. So if you can control your cash flow, we'll call that 1C, so that's uh, that b b b budget thing. <laughs> We've spoken about cracking the whip, so get motivated, get, yeah. off, get off your bottom and do it. Mm. So obviously there's a C left. Now, contingency I've got on my little list here. So does that mean that something can go wrong even if you crack the whip and, and control your cash flow? You've still got to allow for the unexpected. Absolutely you do, because wealth creation is about creating such a, a big pool of assets that you're financially independent so that you could never really work, never have to work again if you wanted to. So up until that point, when you get to that point of financial independence, something could derail your plans a little bit. So it's about putting safety nets in place. So it's not necessarily about having a backup plan, it's about safety nets. What's the biggest thing that you reckon? I mean, obviously you've been uh, helping people to expand their wealth and get their finances under control yeah. for years. What's the biggest unexpected that, or the most common unexpected that you, sort of, you reckon you, your clients come across? Mm, probably the most common one, and this is shown, they lose their income through multiple sources. It can be redundancy because you just haven't really kept up with the skill flow maybe in the company. Um, it could also be losing it through accident or, or serious illness. We think it's never going to happen to us, but I know, Jace, you and I spoke about this two years ago, mm. um, and you mentioned that you had an incident once in your, in your youth where you were unable to work for quite a period of time. So we think we are absolute bulletproof, but that is probably the one that I think people don't expect but actually happens far more common and it's about serious illness or disability, maybe even for a short period of time, a handful of months, but that can really trip people up and, and cause them to need their safety net. Just quickly before we finish, is how do you keep that motivation? How does somebody, you know, resist temptation of spending that money on, you know, things that they don't really need mm. or keeping motivated to save or, you know, to get okay. ahead? Well, well, let's talk a, few, a lot more detail about the cash flow control next week and I'll give yeah. you, expand a little bit more, okay. but to give you a quick answer now, um, the one way is at the moment the spending now, it's because we've anchored ourselves and the spending is going to give us a particular great positive benefit now, usually we'll feel good about it for example, but what it is is about anchoring it in the future, defining something that motivates you just as much that's future oriented in a sense, so that's what we do. So what can viewers take, out, take away today? Okay, there's a couple of things that you can do right, right now, and one is forgive yourself for the past, don't be embarrassed about it, let's draw a line in the sand and say from here on in I'm going to be focusing on the three C's. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is start tracking your money. If you don't know where you, all your money goes from a cash flow control point of view, for the next week before we come on next Tuesday, just write down everything you spend. You don't have to do this for the rest of your life, just do it for a snapshot in time because that will in help, help you inform your, your spending decisions going forward. And I've got one little piece of homework for you, Mr. Person who doesn't like budget word. Yeah. Is between now and next week, can you look up the etymology of the word budget? So go on. The, where it came oh. from. Yeah, where it came from. The origins of the word budget. Go to the online etymology dictionary and I'll ask you next week. Okay. What is the true meaning of the word right. budget? I'm going to guess it, but finishing in an ET, it's probably some sort of French derivative, bougie or something like that. Anyway, I'll, I'll promise <laughs> you I'll do that. Thank I you. should have listened to you two years ago, Matt. I might have some money now. <laughs> I am going to draw a line in the sand today and I'm going to start doing the three C's. Work out where my money's going because I don't get very much of it, but if I can make the most of what I get, that would certainly help. Mm. We're going to go deeper into things next week, so we've got something for the viewers to do. Go to wakeupwa.com.au to find out a little bit more information. You'll get links to Matt Findra. Mm -hmm. at, uh, so Financial Dreams is where that came from. There's the etymology of, of uh, <laughs> Matt Hearn's business name, Findra, mm -hmm. Financial Dreams. If you'd like your financial dreams to come true, Bring a pen and paper next week. Listen to what Maddie has to say. That's great. Good Thanks. to see you again. Yeah. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Matt. We've got to go to a quick break. Sarah Bishop is up telling us all about the Jack Johnson concert from an environmental point of view. Don't go anywhere. Mm.